Welcome back. In the previous video, we stated that our objective was to transfer the one-line diagram data associated with the power source facility into our ETAP model. Also, we learned how to graphically place elements from the element list onto the one-line view. In today's video, we will expand on this foundation and enter some basic data associated with these elements. But before I show you how to enter the data, I wanted to mention that depending on the study of interest, the required data may vary. For example, the input data required to perform load flow studies will be different than the required data to perform short circuit, arc flash, and motor starting. However, since the input data required for load flow is applicable for most other studies, we will focus on these data and we will call them essential data. And let's start with that. To enter equipment data, first we need to access the equipment editor. To access the equipment editor, simply double click on the equipment of interest, such as this power grid, and it will bring the equipment editor. You can also access the equipment editor by hovering over the equipment, right click, and you can access the editor from here. Let's start with the info tab. In the info tab, we can move down to the uh, info box where it provides us with two pieces of information. The first one is the component ID and the second one where this component is connected to. To start with the component ID, I would like to point out that the default ID for power grid is the letter U. And since IDs are unique, ETAP adds an integer to the component to create its unique ID. So when you place your first component, it gets the default name plus number one. As you place more components, the number increases. You can change the name here, but you will be limited to 25 characters. And if you are working on a large project and you wanna change the default name, we can do so by going to the default menu. Let's go to defaults and we are changing source power grid and you can change that default name from a U to something else, okay? The next portion here talks about the bus connection. Power grids are one terminal component. It gets connected to one bus. So right now it shows that the power grid is connected to bus one, but you can change that connection to any bus listed on your one line view. You can lock editing this component or unlock it. However, when it's locked, you still have the condition and the configuration options available to you. The condition box provides you with the state and whether this component is in service or out of service. However, placing a component in or out of service will depend on the state you choose for that component. For example, if the state of the component is as built, you can put that component in or out. If you change the state from as built to something like removed, now you cannot place that component in or out of service. This box here is the configuration box, which gives you the ability to configure your elements. This is also known as the configuration status or mode of operation. So for example, a circuit breaker can be configured to operate in the open or closed position. Uh, loads such as motor can be uh, operated as continuous, intermittent, or even spare. And power sources can be operated uh, in a swing, power control, VAR control, power factor control. But for now, you need to pick up a swing mode since this is the only power source that provides power to the system. And ETAP must have at least one source model as a swing to pick up the slack for solving the power flow equations, okay? And for the rating, we are going to enter 13.8 for 
this power grid this is the rated kv and then for the short circuit let's enter for the three phase 1250 and for the x over r let's enter 30. and next we'll talk about the bus all right as we can see that uh, bus one got the 13.8 kV assigned to it and that is because we entered the 13.8 uh, kV rated value for this power grid and ETAB propagated that to the connected bus. CB1, circuit breaker 1, it shows here some basic information but what I wanted to share with you is the configuration. Uh, this breaker is in the closed position. If you change that to open, ETAP displays the open position on the breaker. Otherwise, if it's not shown, it is presumed to be closed. The uh, two winding transformer, we can see here, this is just some basic information for the two winding transformer, but uh, the rating tab, we need to uh, put 20 MVA for the power rating and uh, we checked the primary and the secondary yes 13.8 and 4.16 is what we need to model next we check the impedance and the uh, typical z and x over r values will be used so we'll check that uh, next we can talk about the transformer winding and if you go to the grounding tab you can see that the primary side of this transformer is connected as delta and the secondary side for that transformer is connected as Y and the Y connection has a solid grounding. Okay, so to expedite the process a little bit, I would like to point out that T1 and T2 are identical. So you can enter the same nameplate ratings that we did for T1 into T2. Also, I wanted it to uh, point out that all breakers shown on this one line diagram are assumed to be closed except circuit breaker 7 cross tie this one here is assumed to be open now let's move down to discuss some loads and discuss different type of loads as you probably know not all electrical loads behave the same therefore loads can be classified as constant current loads constant impedance loads or constant power loads and we will start with bus 2 which contains AC induction motors and motors are considered a constant power loads because the output power remains constant despite the change in voltage. For example, if the motor terminal voltage sags to some limits, the current must compensate and increases proportionally to maintain that power constant. So let's start entering some essential data regarding motor loads. Okay, we will start with MTR1. Double click on MTR1 to bring the equipment editor. We will start with the info tab. The info tab contains an info box and you can see here the default ID for induction machines is MTR. This uh, motor is connected to bus 2 and in the equipment box we can see that uh, we have three uh, different drop down selections. This one here tells us the application type. It can be a motor or generator. We are using typical data. And the priority selection will be used when we talk about operating priorities or load shedding. In here, we have the demand factor. And uh, the demand factor is the amount of time the induction machine is, is actually operating. So uh, we can use 100%, 50% of the time or zero. And, but this information would be utilized under the configuration so we are choosing continuous in our case. Next, I want to talk about the nameplate. In the nameplate, we can assign a horsepower value. And in our case, this is going to be a 50 horsepower, 4 kV. And in here, we are looking for some important data, such as the power factors, efficiency associated with this motor. Uh, you can use some typical values. And I will do that by pressing OK and that would bring me to this typical nameplate data. We can select the typical nameplate data from the NEC for a 50 horsepower motor. 
there is another piece uh, need to be discussed beside the nameplate and that is the cable data and for the example we are using here we are using a, a cable from the library so let's go here and we are going to use a cable that uh, is suitable for 5 kV system and we can filter that a 3 conductor cable and then um, the source of my data would be the National Electrical Code. And we are not using aluminum, so we can uh, take that away. And from here, you choose the EPR. Just double click on that line. Now we specified some information regarding to the cable. Let's pick the size and let's go with eight for now. Press OK. Next, we need to enter the length, and in our case, it would be a thousand. Press OK. And at this point, to expedite the process a little bit, I would like to point out that if you follow the same steps we did modeling MTR1 for modeling MTR2, with the fact that uh, the size is different, MTR2 is 100 horsepower, and everything else should stay the same. And with that, we can move down to another type of load. The next component we should discuss is static loads. And if we go to bus three, uh, load one here is a static load. And by definition, static load are considered constant impedance loads. And they follow Ohm's law, since power equals V squared over R. That means the input power increases proportionally to the square of the input voltage. And to look at the uh, properties of a static load, uh, there is nothing really new here, but uh, uh, we should look at what type of load can be a static load. This would provide us with some good example, like heaters are, heat trays are, resistor, lighting, socket outlet, and so forth. These can be used as static loads. And for the purpose of our example, we need to go to loading. These are connected to 4.16 kV bus, and we are going to toggle the rating to kVA and enter 500 kVA. And that's all what we need for static load. Next, we will discuss lumped load. A lumped load is defined as the combination of motor loads and resistive loads. And as you may know, motors are defined as constant power loads. So imagine yourself that you're trying to model a bus that feeds several motor loads and several heater loads as well. You can simplify your ETAB model and instead of modeling all the motor loads and all the heater loads, you can lump these loads together and you can create a lumped load that represent all these loads combined. Our lumped load has an nameplate rating of 750 kVA. We were also told that 80% of your loads are made of motor loads, 20% of your total loads is made of static loads. And if you can see here that uh, you can change that ratio by moving the slider, we can go to like, let's say 7030. And it shows here, as you change this ratio, each one of these motor load or a static load share the percentage of the total load. Okay. Now let's put together what we have learned so far. In the previous module, we learned how to graphically transfer the one line diagram elements associated with the power source plant into our ETAP model. In this module, we learned how to enter data associated with different elements such as sources, branch elements, and different type of loads. Additionally, we learned how to configure the operation status of all electrical elements included in this one-line diagram. Now it would be appropriate to introduce you to three very important terms that will pave the way for our next module. These terms are presentation, revision, and configuration. 
The way we viewed our one-line diagram in ETAP is called presentations. This current presentation is called OLV1. ETAP allows you to create unlimited presentations in here. Also, the data we entered for these elements was loaded into the project database under base revision. If you want to change some equipment parameters for future modification, ETAP allows you to create unlimited revisions in here. Finally, the one-line diagram was configured to show you the normal mode of operation. If you want to consider emergency conditions or create unlimited plant conditions, ETAP allows you to do so in here. In the next module, we will further expand on these three terms and work with the three-dimensional database. And with that, I want to thank you for watching PowerSource to power up your career and skills. Thank you and good luck.